have some no let's have some noticing about the sides. It's easy for us to get, since our brains learn so well, if we have a prolonged period of time where our, our brain is holding one side closed, that habit will quickly take hold. And your brain will say, that's just normal. That much tension is normal. And it can occur as the result of injury if something really, really hurts. If you break your wrist, your brain says, oh, that hurts. I'm going to hold that still. The, the low part of your brain, even the part that doesn't look at the story of the injury, or let's say you had surgery or something, it says, ah, that really hurts. And as it holds the wrist still and the elbow still and the shoulders pulled into the body, soon those ribs are also being held. It comes deeper and deeper, and it spreads through the body. As, Hannah, as Thomas Hanna said, it spreads like wildfire through the body, these asymmetries. Because as one side tightens up, well, the other side has to bolster against that. So we, we get these asymmetries. They can be from repetitive motion, or sometimes doctors say, oh, you have an idiopathic scoliosis. That means of unknown origin. Well, for some reason, your brain is holding that place tight. And the spine is very bendy. It's sort of like a snake. The leverage that bends the spine are these muscles way on the outside of the body. The column of the of vertebrae, the bodies of the vertebrae that go through your body from top to bottom, they're in general sort of halfway between front and back. Not exactly in some places, but in general, halfway between front and back. So the, the leverage that these outer muscles have, this tube of our torso, that is what is very good at bending the spine. It doesn't take much tension on one side. A few ribs are tight for that to you know, be persistent and create a bend right there. And since we're always practicing our breathing, it gets practice again and again and again. And the brain gives up on breathing into these stuck tight spots. All right. So let's see if we can notice which side needs more more learning. That's what we're interested in. Mm -hmm. How well can we begin to kindle our superpower of self-observation? Imagine there's a line between your nose all the way down between your ankles, from your nose to your ankles, and it's dividing you into two sides. Now, as you look down there at this experience of the anatomy, because we know the anatomy is all there, it's, it's that we don't experience it all the same. The brain is like noticing some things in some places and others it's not so certain. Look down there and say, okay, in a big broad brush stroke way, you know, even though the simplest question is, well, is one side more at ease than the other? Okay, let's look down there. Is one side the achy side? Is, is one side, look carefully, maybe there's a different perception of space on one side compared to the other. Does one side feel really small and one side seems big? Does, does, one, leg, does one leg seem more real than the other? Some clients have said to me, they're different colors. One's purple, one's gold. Are they different colors? Whatever it is for you. What are all the differences? Now, you can sense things like, uh, is one back pocket pushing in to the table more than the other? Is one shoulder resting differently on the table than the other? We can look at that, but I really encourage you to look at it more spatially, okay? Try, pick one side of your ribs and think about that, those side ribs, how they're facing out toward the uh, inside of your upper arm, okay? As you breathe those ribs, just explore it gently. First, just see, does your brain even comprehend the possibility of breathing out into the side ribs? Breathe those ribs out to, toward the arm. Let the body move a little bit if it needs to. And exhale, sort of pull those ribs away from the arm. You just got that nice, easy breathing. Explore that then if you force it, you might be able that you can do it. But uh, where's that line? It really gauge how much effort does your brain think of that as an easy place to breathe? And even think, low, now as you're doing that, think the lowest side ribs, do they move? 
It, do the, does the brain not know how to do it? Or is it like it wants to do it, but there's constriction that it can't. It's like pulling against something, holding it back. And then come up to middle ribs, okay? Halfway between the low ribs and the armpit. Breathe those in and out to the side. And then think about those ribs up, on, uh, up in the armpit. If you didn't have a shoulder, you know, what is the shape of your breathing space? Does your brain, can your brain begin to think about that as you breathe those ribs up? Well, which way do they move that shoulder? Do they lift, are, is, can, that, can those ribs, their job is to hold up the shoulder. Well, as they, as they breathe in, well, do they move adequately up toward your, toward your ear on that side? Okay. Notice which side you picked. Look at that carefully and remember that was the first side. I always wonder, well, why did your brain pick that side first? Now let's try the second side. Think about this, the, the, the surface of those side ribs, where that is. Think about how far, or maybe it's even touching that, uh, the inside of your upper arm. Just do it gently at first. Can, what's the softest you can get those ribs to move? Okay, just gently, gentle effort. And maybe look at, well, if you give more effort, well, what is it pulling against? What, what is the nature of that constriction? Is it, is it stiff right in the rib cage, or is it like there's something else holding it back? Is there a confusion to it? Okay, come up into, let's do low ribs now. We're going to look at that, breathing in and out. How well do they move? Does your brain know that terrain? Because your lungs, they're the same, they're almost exactly the shape of your ribs. Okay? If we have stuck ribs, that's, that's restriction in breathing. Our primary focus as an organism is to breathe. Okay? That's, that's the objective, is to breathe. That's job number one. So, as you're breathing middle ribs, just easy. We're trying to find ease of breathing. A couple cycles and move up to those upper ribs this time. Okay. Do they, do they move? Are they lifting the shoulder? Not the shoulder pulling the ribs up, but can you breathe up high up under the collarbones and up under the shoulder? What is that like? Does your brain, has your brain considered the possibility? Okay. So look carefully at which side needs more learning. Which side is more constricted? That's going to be our focus side today when we learn this movement. Now, this movement is a movement that you'd take to the desert island with you, the side bend. It's a classic. I teach it a little differently than the classic way, but we're saying, well, what does it take to get the brain reconnected to this sort of easy to be out of the awareness, big swath of the side of the body? as you're making these observations before we do this movement, whatever side you think needs the most learning, I'd like you to lie down with that side up as you practice along with us. Okay, so which side are we thinking about that needs the work, Kaylin? Which side is, is sleepier? Um, I'd say left. Okay, okay, left. Mm -hmm. All right, that's what we're going to do. So uh, let's, let's uh, lie down on your side. Could you lie on your side and face the camera? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just switch pillows here. There we go. We're learning the side bend today. So we're going to break it into simple steps so your brain can really get it. That's what we want to do. So imagine there's a, a little red light right here on the uppermost point of this, of this side of your pelvis, the hip. That's, the hip isn't really right there. It's there deep, but we're just thinking this upper surface right here. We're saying there's a little red dot. If you were going to move that dot north up toward the ear, just try that. Can the red dot come north toward the ear and then moving south away from the ear? And just, just sort of go with that, that you can bring it north toward the ear and find that effort, and then could you slowly relax out of it to see where you end up at neutral. And 
you're only giving this simple command to the system. How does that red dot move away from the ear? Does it go in the direction that you're intending it? How does that gently move away? The waist opens. And then relaxing back to neutral, waist closes, pulling directly to the ear. Don't let it veer off course. And now just gently back and forth. Could you have that be an easy movement, not pushing the limit of distance too much, not trying to expand the range, but look at the quality of control that you've got. That's what we're interested in. Mm -hmm. Okay, just easy. And notice even the, that the ribs begin to help a little bit. And how does the whole thing relax? Okay. One more time. Let's only think about north toward the ear. That, that, that red dot comes up. The waist closes. You can pull your shoulder down a little bit maybe to get it toward the ear. Beautiful, that. And in a way, this is the movement. And we're just relaxing out of that really easily. Less and less and less effort. Okay. Let's, uh, let's bring the knees so that it feels like the knees are straight out in front of the hips. Okay. Now I invite you to break these rules. Maybe not quite that far. That's perfect. And you can break these rules, but we're going to stick by some of the basics. Uh, knees are straight out in front of the hips. And just like you have them, shoulders are more or less stacked over each other. That lower shoulder could be forward and you've got your head supported by a pillow. And we just don't want it. What we were trying to avoid is where someone would have their shoulder way, way back. We're not, we're, yeah, that, okay? All right. So let's have your upper hand is here uh, with your thumb is pointing back behind you and your fingers are right here sort of on your front pocket with your elbow up to the sky. And have it be a little below the, the waistband so that you could push you could push that side of your pelvis away from the armpit. Okay, we can do that because in, in a little bit, you're going to be your own therapist. You're, you're going to be doing a self-assisted pandiculation. You're going to be giving some opposition and teaching your, your brain how this waist can open very beautifully. Okay, so let that rest. Uh, Let's try, knees are Velcroed together, just one little dot of Velcro between the knees. Could you just lift that upper ankle a little bit? Okay, and lower down, just notice, well, what's your brain's strategy for doing that movement? It's sort of like a rotation of the thigh, okay? Now I propose, we're trying to get your brain to use the waist to do that movement, okay? So this time, as you, uh, as you be just begin to lift that ankle up, now could you lift both ankles, keep a little space between them, can waist begin to close to lift both ankles? Hold there, give a little bit of opposition with that upper hand while the waist is holding it closed, and have that amplification of the weight of the feet and the push of the hand teach this waist how to open. Does your brain really believe that the waist can change its distance, okay? It's hard to sense the waist. My, one of my early teachers, Martha Peterson, she said that uh, when we get injured, one of the first things we lose is control of the waist. All right, so let's regain control. When you're ready, a breath into this way, side waist. Breath in. On the exhale, like a bellows, lifting both ankles. Thinking about this top surface of your thighs, if you're sitting on, the, on a chair, this is the top. Can you aim that down to face down toward the floor? How do those, the tops of your thighs face to the floor? Hold right there and control that opening slow. 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 Opening beautifully, that's it. Let's, uh, let's break some more rules in the side bend. Bring your attention to your upper foot. Bring it forward and let it rest on the floor in front of the lower foot. And hook that lower foot up and over the, the back of that ank uh, ankle that's in front. Perfect. Okay. Now, it truly is, the legs are locked, one unit. The movement of the pelvis has to lift both feet. When you're ready, you could guide it with the hand a little bit. You can guide that toward the armpit a little bit. 
that, closing on up. Look very carefully. Where do you push your, the, the side that's against the table? Where, where are you pushing into the table? Push down more into the table to find the movement of the pelvis that lifts the ankles. Forget about the ankles. Just think, move the pelvis. Perfect. Open slowly. Just slow. 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 Can your brain look at it as changing space? Okay. Now, as you come into the next one, the breath in is the running start. Push your lower side into the table. Where, where, am, where is that pushing down into the table? Just push that down more and more and more. Hold right there. Okay. Open slowly. Make it a waist movement. Let the ankles completely be along for the ride. The opening waist lowers the ankles. Okay. Beautiful. That's a beautiful lesson you're teaching your system. Okay. Now, uh, let's have that upper arm just rests on the side of the side of the body. Okay. And let's take this lower hand, and could it be right here? That lower hand comes up. It's just on the low ribs, and it's it's sort of sandwiched underneath that arm. Okay. That that lower hand on the ribs. That is just. That's, that's the witness. That's your observation. As you take a breath in, breathe that hand, breathe those ribs to bring that hand a little bit up toward the sky. Just explore that for a couple of cycles. How much do those ribs move? Okay. What is the, what is the limit? What is creating the limit? Okay. Just look at what you've got. Okay, let's bring hand up here, uh, halfway up the rib cage, right there, sort of middle ribs. It's gentle. If it's hard to reach all the way up to those ribs, you could just have fingertips on the ribs. Or if, it's, if you can't get your hand up there at all, just have your arm be sensed. That upper arm is sensing the movement of the ribs. So when you're ready, that gentle breath in. How does this area move in relation to the lower ribs? Does it move more or less? You could have your fingers slightly apart and do the ribs open up underneath? Do they bring your fingers apart? Is there movement in that section of ribs? Do they, is that breathe, dynamic breathing space? Does your brain, is your brain able to get that to work or is it out of the realm of possibilities? Where, where are you in that continuum of amnesia that the amnesia is where we're uh, it's the not knowing. The brain can't even imagine it moving, maybe. Okay. So now, bring that hand up with a flat hand, two fingers up in the armpit, and go way up there with your fingers. Could you find ribs one and two up high in the armpit, just pushing gently? And those are the ribs that their job is to hold up that shoulder. So as you breathe in, do those ribs, how much do they lift up toward the ear? Just a couple of cycles easy. Sort of notice that. That's, this is what the breathing assessment. We want to know that these movements help restore our full, easy breathing. That's very helpful. The brain is relieved when it has plenty of backup reserve breathing space. So now let's take that upper hand. Uh, upper hand is palm is on the side of the head with the elbow up. And let's have that lower hand is just resting there on the table. Okay. Now. You have adequate pillow to support your head. Let's do another assessment. This is the one that is the easier assessment. If you just had like uh, a five-minute practice session, you're doing the side bend, we're going to go through it at the end. Uh, this would be a good, easy assessment to say, am I stuck in rotation? Because when the side is contracted, uh, as a result of the laws of spinal motion, the three laws, which are more like rules than laws, when the side is stuck, we're not going to rotate well. So here, as let head roll back on the pillow as shoulder and elbow and head roll back. And just notice, well, when do you run out of room? Not stretching the shoulder, but really think about it as a torso movement. Where do you run out of room? And then here, looking even at the middle of the movement, through the middle as you bring that shoulder forward and that elbow starts to come down toward the table and that shoulder goes forward, 
Well, are you stiff? Is it stiff? Do, letting that elbow even lower down right into here. Maybe we'll just come like that, that. And now going back and forth between those, sort of like just a, a tree swaying in the wind, We're coming all the way back at this easy effort, gentle like that. Look carefully, what is the vector as the knees stay together, keep the knees together, as the, as the diagonal of the front of the body opens, well, is that the primary constriction? And as you go all the way to the opposite, as those ribs all have to, those diagonal muscles between the ribs, they have to move to allow that shoulder to come forward, to allow this rotation, and look carefully at where is it stiff? Does it move? Right here. We're interested in this. For Kaylin, I can tell, well, we, we can see that, or maybe she can notice that this shoulder, it, the brain says, I don't know if I want it to go forward. It's supposed to, it only goes that far today. Okay, perfect. So now we're gonna do a movement, we're gonna do the upper half of the side bend. Uh, let's have that hand, that elbow's up and the hand is on the head. Now, I'm gonna teach you a whole bunch, of, I'm gonna show you a bunch of different hand positions for the side bend. The limit is we don't wanna to have too big a stretch in the shoulder. So if you had the most uh, freedom, oh, where, where, where do we wanna start? Do we wanna start at the most stretch or do we wanna start and build into that? Yeah, let's start here. You could have your palm on the crown of the head and fingertips come down the underside of the head. And, okay, now for some people that might be a little too much stretch in their shoulder. So try having just fingertips on the crown of the head. Let's come, let's come into that. Fingertips on crown of head. Your hands could be like that, okay? If that's still too much uh, effort in the shoulder, you could have your thumb on that bone behind the back of the ear and your fingers sort of spread out like a tripod uh, right there, and it, that could be good, okay? Also, I invite you to try some side bend. Have hand behind head or hand holds back of neck. And just sort of get an idea of how that would feel. Uh, we're just exploring, and you can come to these adaptations later. But yeah, let's have uh, that upper hand for uh, upper hand. The palm is cupping the forehead. Upper hand, upper hand. Yeah, yeah. It could you could be that could be the position of the hand, the upper hand. Okay. But let's try this. Let's take the lower hand under the head. Lower hand is under the head. Lower hand. Yep, yeah, that's good. And then find a good place for you to have this hand wherever it would be. Both hands are holding the head, okay? Now, just like before where we were lifting both ankles, the waist was lifting the ankles. Here we're saying, well, how does the upper torso lift the ankles? The rib, I'm not the ankles. How does the upper torso lift the head? Okay, the hands are gonna be lifting the heavy head. Let's be super gentle. That's the most common mistake I see. Uh, yeah, let's, the hands are lifting the head and let that down easy. Yeah, that's good. The most common mistake I see is that people are doing this movement with their neck. We don't want to make the neck do this movement. The neck is always being called on to save the day. We want the ribs to do the movement, okay? Let the head be heavy in the hands, even if the head is pushing down slightly in the hands, okay? so. When you're ready, think about these, si these uh, this upper side ribs. When you're ready, the breath comes in to the upper side ribs. That's the running start. Squeeze the air out like a bellows as you start to push your side into the table. Put it together piece by piece. Hands lift the heavy head. Find a whole lot of places down to, to push that side into the table or into the mat. Hold there and open slow. Ribs open to lower head. Gentle, slow, control the movement. And not, not trying to stretch it out too far, but trying to find what is, where are you at with no effort? Can you create this continuum of coming from no effort into effort all the way back down to no effort? So let's try that again. Let's come up into it in steps. The gentle breath in is the running start. On the exhale, each step, you put it together. Come into it. Is armpit pulling right down here 
right to this point, right on the lowest rib. Okay, perfect. And then lower down really easy. What can your brain notice? Which rib's opening at what, mo at what point in the movement? Does it, can it sense that it's smaller? Can it sense the tension? If it's, if it's too complicated, just make it the movement and make it smooth. The goal is smooth, controlled movement. That control supersedes sensing. So here, let's try a little bit differently, okay? This time, let's think about it. We're gonna let those ankles come up. The waist is gonna lift the ankles as a counterbalance, but let it do it when it, when it when it makes sense for the system is the counterbalance. The gentle breath in, opening the ribs. On an exhale, thinking about these ribs, how do they push down through the body toward that lower hip as head, hands lift to heavy head, closing these ribs, come into the side bend, head comes up, gentle, lift ankles, put that together. Can waist pull those ankles and lift? It's armpit to hip and hip to armpit. Look at that distance and open slowly. Let the breath come in. Maybe even take a breath in. Breathe into that beautiful opening maybe as, you, as you're finished with that. Not a big stretch, but just have your brain know that that's breathing space. Now, if it's possible, if it works for you, we're going to take this pillow out and just let the head tassel down. Is that too far? Okay, uh, let's have no pillow then. Okay, there we go. Now that really lets us have this beautiful potential for openness on this side of the body. So when you're ready, let's have that gentle breath in, squeezing the air out, pushing the side down into the table to find that. Can you find a little bit front of body of, this of the waist, the side of the waist, the back of the waist? Low ribs, middle ribs, upper ribs, open slowly. Where is it going by too fast? Yeah, back up into it. Let's back up into it. Lower down three, just start with three tiny steps. One, two, three, and pause. Close up, back up one step, just one step. And then continue that, lowering down three two, one, and pause right there. Back up one step to find it. Can you find the whole thing? And lower down, three, two, one. Easy, 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 okay. This time we're gonna add, we're, uh, once we're in the contraction, I'm gonna have you pull your forehead a little towards your knees to sort of curl up a little bit, but do it gently when we come into it. The gentle breath in, on an exhale, hands lift the heavy head, the ear comes straight up towards the sky, not curling up yet. Keep that spine nice and straight. That's good, just side bending. Now add the curl, squeeze a little bit of air out as you close those front ribs, that's it. Find that smallness. How do you, which direction do you open out to to really give that line an experience of openness? How does that shoulder maybe roll back behind you as you open? Gentle. Breathing into those ribs to help them open. Head sets down softly. Like, set down, it's like your ice cream that fell on the sidewalk on a hot summer day, just sort of like melt out onto the table after the side bend, okay? This time, we're gonna, as you come into that movement, we're gonna uh, be adding the arch, just like Ronelli. We're gonna be pushing the tummy forward a little bit once we're in the contraction, pulling that shoulder back, just like a little bit of a yawn. So let's think about it, get the shoulders sort of stacked up to start, the gentle breath in, on the exhale, maybe start with the ankles. Which starts first? Is it head or ankles? You decide. Be in control of every aspect. Put it together. Once you're up into it, just the right amount for you. Pull that. Sh push your tummy forward as you pull your shoulder back. Push tummy forward as you pull shoulder back. That's it. And find that nice line of contraction down the back. And open out of that slowly. 
Shoulder comes forward and lo head lowers as ankles open and waist opens. Ankles lower. Beautiful, that. Okay. Now just one more, any way you want, the side bend. That gentle breath in. Exhale. Look for where the place that your brain doesn't know. Where's the quiet, unknown place? Either find the change in the space or the control and smoothness. Just opening out of that just the right way for you. Take all the time that you need, breathing as you go. Less and less effort. Can your brain see and know every step to get out of that? Gentle. Gentle. That's it. Breathing in. Let that open. Okay. Let's have the head come back onto the pillow. Yeah. Okay. And let's have, uh, let's have, uh, hand is on head, elbows up to the sky, and that lower hand is just out to the front there. There we go. Now, we're going to do this assessment again. It's shoulder rolls back and shoulder rolls forward. There we go. And just sort of notice what we've got here. Notice what it's like in the middle of that movement, shoulder forward and shoulder back, that the ribs are helping that shoulder blade move forward and back. And look, through, as you go through the middle of the movement, how is, is it, is it stiff? Is it achy? Is the brain able to have those ribs slide to deliver that shoulder back? Okay. Let's have that upper arm is down resting on your side with your wrist over your hip. Yep. And let's bring the, that lower hand right here to the low, low ribs. Okay. When you're ready. Just a gentle breath in. Notice what you've got there. Sort of explore, indulge in really looking at how much of it is easy and less and less and less effort. Maybe take a breath in, find that ease, then if you push further, where, where is there constriction? Where is there limits? Is it more clear what's happening? Does your brain understand that there's a new ability to have some easy breathing space. Let's come up here, uh, hand on the middle ribs right here. Yeah. And breathing that, those ribs up toward the sky. Breath in. Okay, look at that. Let's have uh, finger... Fingers up high in the armpit, really slide them up there. That's good. And then we're going to, the armpit is called the axilla, technically. Up in the axilla, uh, breathing that. Do those, are those ribs able to lift that shoulder up toward the ear more easily? Okay. All right. How about lie down on your back? Yeah, there we go. And uh, here's a pillow for your knees. Let's try that. Okay. And just let's see what we've got here. Perfect. Okay. Well, now, as that's settling down, Imagine that line dividing you into two sides and be in that and just witness whatever your brain can notice about that. Okay. How is, is one side more at ease than the other? Is there perception of the distance and the space of the body? Is, is there more knowledge and understanding of one side of your body compared to the other? Look at both sides. Does, does, does your brain understand the potential for movement 
in a clear way? Did you give it a good lesson? Let's try thinking about that focus side that we just did. Uh, breathe into those ribs. Breathe those ribs out toward the arm. And exhale, squeezing them away from the arm and have that nice undulation of the breath in and out, that respiration. Yep. Look at that. Now try going over looking at the other side. Low ribs, middle ribs, upper ribs, that understanding and that difference. Okay. Now, I invite you to practice this movement on the second side. It's important to de-escalate the whole, both sides of the globe. We want to de-escalate this, with this movement, the side bend. It's a very good movement. 